Today we have the opportunity to talk to Marine Esquenet. Uh, hi Marine, how are you doing? Hi, I'm very fine, thank you. I'm actually spending um, the week at my family in Belgium and it's very nice because, you know, it's been a long time since I last saw them uh, with the corona period and stuff. And uh, I even got some sun at the seaside and it's, so now those are two words that um, you normally don't say together, Belgium and sun. So I guess 2020 is really like a, a weird year, isn't it? But it's cool. <laughs> I'm fine. Absolutely weird. The weirdest year I, I think I have lived in all yeah, my life. Definitely. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's good to see you. It's good to see you that you, that you, that you are doing. Uh, are you fine as well? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing yeah, I'm okay. here in Berlin where we met. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Because we met in, the, in this uh, localization, uh, lock lunch uh, that uh, Michele Cerioni and the idea created by um, Jan Henrik. So, yeah, um, for those of you who do not know uh, Marine, um, uh, she's a technical translator and a terminologist uh, working at uh, RWS uh, Moravia mm -hmm. and a social media producer and an entrepreneur. So, a lot of a lot of things going on in your life i guess <laughs> marie marine what does a technical translator and terminologist do at moravia what does it look like working there uh well i mostly like most of my days um i, I just spend most of my time spe um, translating technical text from english and german into french Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I've studied trans uh, terminology, sorry, uh, during my master thesis, and uh, I it allows me to um, somehow I always use the skills. It's very nice, even though I'm not properly working in the the um, terminology team. I think I've got a very efficient um, method for looking for terms uh, for terminology terminology, sorry. Um, I also work hand in hand with uh, the terminology team if I see something's wrong in the term base um, and it's always nice to know have the skills in the background like to be able to use multi-term um, yeah and also of course I it, it happens that uh, I've got I get given uh, some terminology projects uh, for in parallel with our translations for the client uh, let's say so we're doing if, if we've got clients since two years and um they decide they want a term base that goes with it then we work on that as well so it's it's kind of it's really nice to be able to use it some it's not often but um yeah i really like the fact that i can do both if the um, the opportunity comes yeah well so you are as you are describing not just translating content i guess you are also in charge of managing term bases from the from the, your customers and and uh, yeah, keeping them up to date or, I mean, what's the, what's the, what you do as a terminologist? Um, so we have uh, at Hervé's Moravia in our office in Berlin, there's a, a dedicated terminology team, which works 100% uh, of the time on that, on creating term bases, cleaning yeah. them, uh, mm -hmm. curating them. Uh, and I'm not part of this team, I'm really part of the translation mm -hmm. team. But um, of course, like we exchange quite a lot considering um, we are working within the translation, which they don't have this view of the thing. But um, yeah, it, it's it's really what I said. It's um, okay. like an exchange, a constant exchange. Sometimes it's a few words a day. Sometimes we spend an hour talking about a project um, that we'll do for clients. But um, so I'm, I'm not really doing terminology, but mm -hmm. I, I help, let's say, yeah. Yeah, well, as you are saying, if you are translating, you are doing absolutely everything terminology. I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, okay, fantastic. When when I was introducing introducing you, I was saying that you are also a social media producer, marketing expert, actually. You you post a lot of content related to, to marketing on your social mm -hmm. network. Um, yeah. Is that related somehow to, to, your, to your daily job as a translator? Or what does, what, what's the role of that? media producer and marketing expert part of your life in, in your professional career? Yeah, well, um, to be honest, at the beginning, it wasn't related at all, or it wasn't supposed to be. Um, I literally started when I was 17 years old, just posting oh. um, my outfits or um, things I'm passionate about on social media, uh, like, like a lot of people do nowadays. Um, 
And then it was really just a nice thing to do as a hobby for me whilst I was studying. Like when I was done studying, I was doing a little break, um, posting pictures, and I could see more and more people were following and engaging and commenting on my content. So it was like really like a nice little bub bubble to do at the same time as my studies. Um, and yeah, I continued doing it Why, uh, once I started working as a full time translator. Um, I, I didn't give up on social media. I still like my account was doing pretty well. And uh, that's when I actually like brands were starting to contact me to to help them to help them create content. Uh, mostly, you know, it's mostly like content writing to help them with a campaign, create a picture, a quality picture that they can repost themselves on their website or that I can post and give my, my opinion about a product mm -hmm. or an article. Um, so that was going quite well and it, that's exactly when I started to be really passionate about it like it just blows my mind how you can be although it all happens behind a screen and it's with people you don't know at the end of the day um, but you share a moment with them you just share something with someone who somehow is similar to you and shares a struggle or a passion or you know and although you're very far away on a distance level mm -hmm you're just able to discuss about something you like. And I think it's really, really amazing. I really started to be passionate about it. Um, nowadays, I still continue doing this kind of work on the side as a freelance. I do, I do create content. I had brands with their campaigns, um, but I'm doing more like on the top of it. Nowadays, I'm, I'm more like, I'm posting less on my account and I'm more in contact, in regular contact with brands um to just create their content for their website mm. so they asked me okay we would like seven pictures for this product can you do it for us they just use external resources to create their content it, sometimes it's a text sometimes it's a picture so it's mostly what i do nowadays i still post on my account but i'm i'm wow. so grateful for that because i i got the chance to work with amazing brands like as a kid i would never have believed that you know like now I look behind, uh, I've been able, for example, to work uh, with Canon, the camera brand, and test one of their super high-end um, camera for a year and take pictures of, for them, um, or with head and shoulders, like, you know, it's a bit superficial, yeah. but as it's just mm -hmm. amazing, it's really amazing as a feeling, it's really re rewarding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think at the beginning, I think there wasn't really a link, but now I'm thinking about it. Uh, I think there definitely is one with my translator career as well. Um, I think I just, I'm just a creative person and I just love to play with words. <laughs> and um, yeah, I just love to create, like to be able to make an impact with, um, with the images or the words um, most importantly, I'm creating so that the person that is going to read them or see them is going to remember it. I love, I love that, and I think it's definitely the same as translation at the end of the day. Yeah, so. No, absolutely. I, I am fascinated by all you are telling me because I find it super useful for a translator to have some of the skills you are describing. You are a copywriter, you are a translator, you are a terminologist. So wow, you you can do so many things. And it's also very important to, yeah, at you know, least in my opinion, to diversify because sometimes, uh, I mean, exactly. as a freelancer, because uh, right, right now, if, if you are working at Fabia, uh, but yeah, for freelancers, it's important, I believe, for example, to know about copywriting and presentation technology, that, that's super useful. I also said that you are an entrepreneur. Is that related to all this you were um, talking us about, about uh, creating content, or, um, working with images and things like that, or it's completely different? Uh, well, I think it's all kind of related, but yeah, I've got this little project. I wouldn't say I'm really like a, an entrepreneur, but I've got this little project I really want to do. Um, I won't say too much about it because I don't want to curse it. You know, it's not there. It's not quite ready yet. Uh, but yeah, it's basically about creating a website where um, where um, people would be able to find their, let's say, the most famous or the most regular brands like Zara, H&M, oh. uh, online on one single website and on sale all year long instead of having to go and dig on each website, oh. uh, something that is really like the last trend. Uh, but yeah, I still need to work on it. Um, 
but also I think it's also totally me because I'm also like a big fan of fashion and it's kind of all related, you know, like working with the internet, working with social yeah. media. Um, yeah, I just, as I said, I, I think I really, really like to to learn new stuff all the time. I'm just, uh, I just never want to stop learning. And I think it's really, really important to get some skills from one career and put it into the other one. And I read an article actually recently um, saying that it's very important to have at least two careers. I mean, I think it's not just for work, you know, it can be something with sport or music, but um, because then you, you meet people from one circle and then you can bring everything you take from that into your other career. And um, yeah, I think I just want to always reinvent myself and I never want to stop. Uh, yeah, I never want to be stuck and I want to learn. <laughs> no, I find that that fantastic. I actually agree with you. I think we should never stop learning, acquiring new skills. Um, I mean, so sometimes in a formal way, sometimes as you are describing in an informal way, just meeting people, or going to attending an event or something like that. That's, that's very important. And I like that you, you pursue your dreams and you try to yeah. make them real. So would you encourage people also to, to develop their ideas as, as you are doing? Oh, definitely. Like, I think you, well, of course, you need to think a little bit about it. Like, you need to see if it's, um, if it's reasonable. But if, it, if you've got an idea that pops up every so often and you think really it's a good idea you definitely need to go for it but i agree that the most difficult part is always the first phase so you think oh my god it's a lot oh my god it's never gonna work because like you you can find so many excuses you know and i think you need to go for it really even if it doesn't work at least like this is another thing i really want to have i don't want to regret anything so if i'm thinking about it and if, if i think it's worth trying then let's try and you know it's you can just be like you're just gonna grow out of it and um yeah i i would say definitely go for it but i think an important thing to say to say with like on that subject is also to know your priorities because it can also kind of be easy to take on take on a lot of stuff and then get overwhelmed somehow so do everything you really want to do but know your prior your priorities and then once you've done you you're good with your higher to do then do what what you want to do um after that you know yeah yeah absolutely and i also agree with you on on this and yeah then do not be i, I would recommend people not to be afraid of uh, failure because at least i don't believe something like that exists mm -hmm. just as you are saying just growing learning and even if you uh, somehow fail in the end or your business your idea doesn't uh, come out or well it doesn't matter because you have learned a lot of a course lot of way. you yeah. have taken a lot of things and that you can apply as you were saying before on different places different careers so that that's the the best part of it I yeah completely, uh, agree with you and next time it will work you know maybe it wasn't the right thing it's just or the right time, maybe sometimes exactly, exactly. Yeah, a matter of time, and maybe yeah. maybe sometimes you have an idea and you see someone later launches the same thing and it it, it works well. It's because you were not uh, yeah. at the right time. Yeah, but yeah, of course you, exactly. you can learn about. Um, we have also some uh, questions from uh, people on the internet on the social social media that um. Uh, we have uh, Marine uh, De Bo that has uh, left us a question for you, actually, too. Um, uh, she asks about how you see the, how do you see the translators' profession evolving for the next year? If you have already noticed any changes since you started working as a translator, I guess all these are uh, related to the artificial intelligence, to this matching translation is getting better and better. Um, it's a very good question. So how do you see it? Have you seen differences from the day you started? Yeah, it's a very good question. Uh, actually, I do. Um, so I think we can all, from within the industry, we can all say that automatic translation is definitely on full speed right now. And uh, it would be it would be silly to just try and pretend nothing's happening, you know? Um, I think a lot of translators are feeling um, are not liking it, which is normal because the first reaction you have is, oh my God, this is going to steal my job. Um, I think you need to go over that. And um, 
just see it as a as a way to work quicker to create more content you just need to to evolve with your time and this is happening we can't do anything against it um it's not by pretending it doesn't exist that it's gonna help you know so let's let's try and learn post edition let's try and learn uh how to to deal with the machine as we'll have to do it in the future um and yeah i think we shouldn't be afraid we we just our work is gonna work it's gonna change sorry but everyone's job does within a, a lifetime you know um so yeah i definitely see a difference with that um just to come back to that at the beginning the automatic translation was something but it wasn't we no talk about it every day let's be honest at work um it wasn't such a big thing when i started um five, so that was five years ago and also i've been very very lucky um that at university although it wasn't kind of something big on the market yet um we had already they were kind of on it and we already got some um, um some lessons about it like it wasn't very deep it was in proper post edition but you could see it was going in that direction so we learned how to uh, spot mistakes you know numbers uh, family names something that could be easily done by a computer um so yeah i'm very grateful for that as well um and um i think i think it's maybe pro it's probably a bit difficult difficult for people who are who have been working as a translator for longer you know on the market yeah. Yeah. but um i think we once you go past this fear this first reaction then we can just use it to do even better translations uh, and quicker and just use it to to make even yeah a better work yeah absolutely <laughs> i agree with you as professionals we have to get used to to live with the machines and and yeah and as you were saying for example to to know more about editing things like that and as users i think we already see the um, machine translation mostly everywhere sometimes but we, we we see really bad translations but some other times we don't care that much about the result of translation for example if we go to read comments about you know imagine i'm uh, making it up at a hotel and uh, if we want to know about what people say about that hotel and uh, and, and comments are in russian and, and you click on a button and it says what what uh, tells you what they have said i mean mm -hmm. helpful so yeah of somehow course. Yeah, somehow I think it's it's already part of our life. Yeah, uh, definitely. Professionals, as you you are saying, we have to evolve and to get used to it and, and to use it on our, our favor. And yeah. Yeah, exactly. Let's just take it as a you know as an ally instead of yeah. trying to fight against it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have three last questions. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which project in your career um is the one that you feel prouder of? Because you have done a lot of things like. Uh, were saying uh, you started very young um, uh, doing these things related to brands, copywriting, creating, creating images and, and things like that. Or which, what, what has been what you feel uh, prouder of, or has made a bigger challenge or, or made you grow more in, in your professional career? Um, well, uh, the, the first thing I can think of is literally a project I've just been given um, from my company. Uh, from Hervés Moravia and they it's a social media related project for the company although I'm, I'm employed as an as a translator there they give this this responsibility to me and uh, yeah I just they gave me the feeling that somehow there was a room for for ideas for innovation for people who want to come and do something good for the company and that was really like a great thing to see I am feeling very grateful um, yeah, I, I've been working there for um, four years, a bit more than four years now. And uh, I have to say, I've grown so much in this last year. I've met so many people um, in the, within, like, with doing this project. I've met so many inspiring people. I felt very supported in it as well. Um, so if, they, if they're hearing this thing by any chance, like, yeah, I, I'm very grateful. <laughs> and uh, it, I think this is the project who, who allowed me to grow the most in the last let's say three years because it was really like a lot you know it was like challenging um and also yeah 
challenging and but very 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 stimulating and uh, stimulating stimulating well you know <laughs> and um, and yeah no I, I the, the, this was amazing really oh, that that that's fantastic to hear I mean when you feel great at, at your job place uh, workplace uh, that's that's fantastic I guess Moraga is a super big company and uh, you are surrounded by people from everywhere that makes the that you even more, more interesting yeah. and if, then if you your leads are even uh, good and an intelligent people to work of with course. that's fantastic it's fantastic yeah, yeah i'm I feeling very happy at the moment yeah, yeah. Um, uh, another question is from a professional perspective which three tools or webs or apps uh, make your life easy uh, so easy that you could not live anymore without them um well, I would say uh, so. I I use uh, Memsource, Memsource, sorry for uh, translation projects. I think it's really easy, really uh, mm -hmm. intuitive. I really like it. Uh, I also use Canva and uh, Lightroom for editing my pictures and creating content. They're amazing apps. Like it's super easy to just create a filter and repost it and have like a, you know, you can create a harmony for your content. And what would we be actually without uh, Microsoft Teams uh, in this day and age? So I have, I kind of have to say it, you know. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, actually, it's it's interesting because uh, I have never used uh, Microsoft Teams, but I'm I'm uh, hearing of it uh, more and more. I didn't know actually at the beginning that it was also a tool very similar to to Zoom or yeah. to other, uh, or to other tools like that, but that enable you to do many more things so that that's interesting i want to to to, to use it and of course i agree with canva for example yeah that's, do you uh, know it do you know the app canva yeah yeah yeah. i, I actually we use it uh, for for our website oh, and yeah, for, we can yeah. create content for our social media that's yeah. fantastic because um of course you don't need to to be a professional designer exactly. to create content so that yeah that, that it helps looks very professional you know yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the final result looks looks really good exactly uh, and then memsource um i haven't used it but if, if you say it uh, i guess you you have used a lot of uh tools so i mean having one that it is easy to use it's a bit uh, so yeah it, it, that, that, that's great and um, well the last question um what would you recommend to those people who are um uh, Starting, just starting in the translation industry, or who are looking for for their place in. Um, well, I would I would really say like go for the internship, go for the job, go and talk to people on LinkedIn, go and do I mean not at the moment obviously, but go and do networking, like just talk to people. I think it's the the way. Uh, get to know people, um, just you get to see how it works in the industry as well. When you start as a student at university, we, we don't learn anything like that, you know? Like you just arrive on the market without your, I was I was so happy and grateful to have my internship, but you arrive, you don't know anything about how it actually works. Um, yeah, I, I think really the internship, if you get a um, job offer even though if it's not like your dream just take it and see how it works maybe you might have a surprise you know you just you just learn to know yourself whilst doing it and um, yeah getting to know people within the market and the industry uh, is also very important so for example at the beginning I was also thinking of being maybe a freelance translator and I'm very happy I haven't done it uh, I think nowadays I could literally maybe do it better than what I would have done at the beginning because I've got the contacts. I know freelance translators who have been doing it. I know what the struggles are. Like I now have all the tools at disposition to know if it's a good idea or not, you know. But I think when you come out of university, you have no idea. So literally any experience you can have, any people you can talk to, like certainly contacts, like it's very important. Yeah, I, absolutely. Yeah. I I completely agree with you. I think it's, of course, we all have our different paths in in this way, um, and different professional careers. But if you have the opportunity to 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 learn from different things or about working from a comp for a company, or working as a freelancer, 
that's very interesting because you see everything. You see exactly. uh, yeah, the struggles, as you have said, that that's very that, that's very significant. I mean, uh, significant yeah. that uh, yeah, freelancers have to go through even more these these days with the uh, coronavirus. Yeah. And yeah, and then also there are also struggles when you are working in a company. So of okay, course, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it's really interesting, and yeah. I will also recommend people to to do that. Try to try to learn, try to take opportunities to learn from them, even if they are not your dream job. But of course, you you'll grow, you'll, you'll have the opportunity to find other things. And, and just ask the questions, you know, like because yeah. we're afraid when we're 18 years old, just ask the people ask them on nowadays with linkedin and stuff you, it's just so easy to you know to get in yeah. contact in touch with per people from yeah. the industry so don't be absolutely. afraid to just ask absolutely. yeah absolutely and actually something that we were um uh, talking about at the beginning uh, and you have said now so this is like the perfect circle for me uh, <laughs> talking about networking and yeah i find it very important for example you and i we met at this local lunch here in berlin and i find mm -hmm. that Super useful to to find interesting people, people with whom you may collaborate or not, or you people that can give you as saying good advice. You that's something exactly. that we are not taught at university, of course, and something yeah. uh, they are quite new. But yeah, let's take advantage of that. Meet people who are in the industry, and don't be afraid to meet people who have been like for 20 years or 30 years in the industry. Learn from them. Because they all belong to learn. Exactly. Yeah. And then maybe you're a little bit afraid at the beginning, and then the next time you're less afraid, and you know someone, you know another person, and then it's how yeah. it works. Let's just I, be afraid, and then the fear and it's goes away. Very interesting to make connections and to get to know um, interesting people. Um, yeah. Marie, um, it has been a pleasure talking to you. I will Thank talk you. for hours, but you, <laughs> you're with your. <laughs> um so thank you very much again for for your time it has been really nice learning from all the all, all your point of view of, uh, of the industry your advice in the industry the best of luck with your project as a creator content writer and with this project i find it very very interesting like a place where you can go and find what you are looking for i mean you have to Something like that, like in every industry, like for a flight, you have a scanner. Yeah, exactly. Like that. Why not having that for, yeah, for clothing or for things like that? Exactly. Yeah, it's very intelligent, very interesting. So, yeah, again, uh, the best of luck with, with that idea. I think it's uh, very interesting. Very intelligent. I'll, I'll try and do the best I can to get it going. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure thank you, you so much for okay. interviewing me. Like, it was a pleasure. Okay, thank you very much. See you around, <laughs> hopefully, in Berlin. Yeah, hopefully soon. <laughs> Take care. Enjoy your family. Ciao, ciao. Thank you. Ciao, ciao.